Hi, welcome back to Miss Sir Graham's Maths. Uh, this is a worked solution video for the complex numbers external from 2022. Um, I'm just going back and filling in some gaps of worked solution videos I hadn't gotten around to making. So this is um, this particular one. I've provided solutions through my Instagram page already. Uh, I just haven't made a video. So here it is. Okay, for question one, we want to take this. Um, number i guess uh, and rewrite it in the form that looks like this so we are trying to the, the key thing here whenever you've got um, anything with thirds or complex numbers that are on the bottom of a fraction you're always going to need to rationalize the denominator so this starts off with oh i've skipped ahead a little too far just a second um taking that um um, number that we've been given to begin with and we multiply it by uh, the 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 conjugate of the the uh, denominator there so we just change the sign of the third and it will sort itself out now i heard a great phrase this week from um, another maths teacher that calls it the evil twin so we multiply it by the evil twin of the denominator there okay so then that looks like this so if we do 12k multiplied across by 1 minus 5k we get this top line here and if we multiply out the bottom the negative and the positive square root of 5 will cancel each other out and we are in we end up with 1 minus 5. so then that uh, can be simplified 1 minus 5 is minus 4 so we do the 12 divided by minus 4 in both of those terms and we end up with minus 3k plus 3k root 5 which is in the form we were being asked for okay for part b let's bring that up so we have um oh sorry i've got a bit of a weird print out there i'm not sure why the squared is there but that should say equal to so if u is equal to m to the 5 says pi by 3 in fact i'm just gonna fix that up give me one sec right so we need to find u over v in polar form and it helps that each of them have been given to us in polar form already so this is actually quite a straightforward question so we're working out u over v now in polar form that means that we take the modulus of each and divide it so we've got m to the 5 over m squared and the argument gets subtracted so we have the pi by 3 minus the pi by 5. now if you're not very good with your fractions just pop this up on the calculator um, let's just get this in view here so you could ignore the pi part of it but type it in as a fraction um, like this and then you know to add pi to it in the end so then we go back to here the m5 over m2 cancels to m3 cis and then 2 pi by 15 which is the fraction um, that came up on the calculator just here all right part c okay for part c we are given three complex numbers here we want to find the value of k which sits inside one of them if the argument of the those three multiplied together makes pi by four let's start by multiplying those three things together so we've got u times v times w um, we're going to expand that now the first thing is don't do anything by hand if you don't have to so let's do three plus two i um, sorry just lost track of things there there we go three plus two i times it by four plus two i so we don't have to expand that out by hand Oop, i've got a little error there let's just fix that there we go so that's 18 plus 14 i so we can just put that straight in for this multiple here now we do need to expand by hand and it comes to this so just multiplying out that double bracket and then of course i squared becomes minus one so this turns into minus 14 k and i've rewritten it so the real parts come first and the imaginary parts come second now we need something that helps us to work out the k well the other bit of information in the question is that the argument of this is pi by four which means that we have an isosceles triangle because that's an angle of 45 degrees pi by four so those two sides will be the same and that means that the real part of this here is equal to the imaginary part those lengths are the same 
So we set that equal. So 16 minus 4k is equal to 8k plus 28. Um, and in, in this case, some people get confused about why we haven't written an i down here. i is like giving us the direction that it's going in, but 8k plus 28 is giving us how far it's gone. So the length itself is 8k plus 28. So set those equal to each other and solve them. And we get that k is 0.545 or 6 elevenths. Okay, part D. We want to find the values of P that make this have one real solution. Now, if we're told about the types of solutions, we know the discriminant is going to come into this one. But we first of all need to get this into a more comfortable quadratic form. So let's work with that. First of all, I'm going to move the um, the 5 over to be with the x, and I'm taking the 2 root x plus p um, to be on the, the side by itself, because from there I can square both the sides and get rid of the square root. Now remember when we're squaring both the sides to make sure you don't miss the pieces that are commonly missed. So if we square the left hand side, the 2 also has to be squared. It, it doesn't come out to 2x plus p. Um, we have to square that 2 as well, so that becomes 4. And then on the right-hand side, the whole of this gets squared. So it's like two brackets times to each other, x plus 5 times x plus 5. So we've got x squared plus 10x plus 25. I see so many mistakes where we um, have students that forget about that 10x in the mid middle, so don't be one of those. Okay, then that um, we can carry on working through with that one to get this next line. And then I'm bringing this over to look more like a quadratic that we're used to playing with. So we've got x squared at the front, then our x, x terms, and then all the constant terms together um, like this and set it equal to zero. Um, now I'm going to carry on writing up on the right hand side here. Just on the real paper, there was this went onto the next page, but just so it all fits onto one screen, I'm going to put it up here. When you're doing this, do carry on down the page. Don't make it difficult for your marker to mark this. Okay, now we've got the quadratic and we're told it has one real solution, which means that the discriminant must be equal to zero. So let's pull out the discriminant pieces here. So B is six. Uh, 4 times a, which is 1, and c is the whole of the constant term here, 25 minus 4p. And we're setting that equal to 0 because we're told that there was one real solution. Now, uh, working that through, multiply through the bracket, see what we've got. Um, we can carry on with the steps there, and p is equal to 4. All right, and now for the excellence question from question one, which I think is not actually too tricky. You should all be giving these a go. Um, right, we've got this situation. Um, w and Z are complex numbers, and we want to show that this is true. Okay, so let's start off by writing W as a complex number um, with the X and Y terms separated, or sorry, rather real and complex parts in two different pieces. Uh, and z is x plus i y. Now we need to, I can't call both of them x plus i y, that's why I've got w as a plus b i. Okay, now the, the pieces of what we've got up here are that w plus z, and if we add these two things together, we're going to add the real parts and add the imaginary parts, so we have that it equals this, and the w minus the conjugate of z Remembering that conjugate is the opposite here, so it'll be w subtract the uh, the conjugate, which is x minus i y. So that means that we have, if we're going to do w minus the conjugate, so it'll be a, so a here minus the x for the real part, and the imaginary it'll be b minus the conjugate of this, which would be minus i y, so it becomes b plus y i, b plus y i, like this for the the complex part. Okay, now thinking ahead to this bit here, we can just note down that the real part of w is a, so we can see that there, and the real part of z is x, and that's what we're trying to get to, something that only has a and x in it. Okay, now back to the left-hand side of this. Right, so modulus means we take the real parts, add them together and square it. 
then we add on the complex parts, add them together and square it and take the square root. Now, since we will do the square root and then we will square it, that kind of cancels each other out. So that first part, we're doing the real parts added together and squared, and then add on the imaginary parts added together and squared. If you're not following that bit, maybe just go back and revise what modulus means. So this straight line here. Then we're going to take away what's happening here. So subtracting this portion of things. So W minus Z conjugate. So this is um, this bit here. And we want to take the modulus of that. So that'll be the real part and square it and the imaginary part and square it. Um, now I've put an extra set of brackets around there just to make sure I didn't make mistakes since this is a, a subtraction here. I didn't want to miss anything out. Okay, now if we cancel things out that are the same, we've got b plus y squared is going to take away b plus y squared. So those two things actually cancel. And we're only left with the a plus x squared minus the a minus x squared. Now we're going to multiply out those brackets and see what happens. But it's looking promising because look, we, we now only have the a and the x's that we know that our answer needs to be made up from. So if I multiply out that bracket, this is what I get. And then we're going to take away the multiple, the multiplied out bracket for a minus x squared. Now working through what that simplifies to, you can see the a squared take away the a squared. And we've got the x squared take away the x squared here. So we end up with 2ax plus 2ax, which is 4ax, which happens to be 4 times the real part, because we said that was a of w and for, uh, uh, then times by the real part of z, which is x, exactly what we wanted. Okay, question two, a starts us off nicely with the remainder theorem. So if we are told that this is divided by x plus two, um, it means that what we need to do is substitute in um, a value of minus two, and we will get the answer of three. And we need to work out what does b have to be to make that true. So let's start by substituting in the minus 2 into this equation here and set it equal to 3. Now we're working through and solving that. And we get an answer of b equals minus 7. Right, next, find the complex number z that makes this true. So let's write z as x plus i, y. Um, so if I then add on 4 times the conjugate of z, I'm adding 4 times x minus i, y and setting that equal to 15 plus 12i. Now consider just the real terms. So all the real terms have to be equal. So the real parts on the left hand side have to equal the real part on the right. So that tells us x must be 3. Do the same with the imaginary. The imaginary parts on the left hand side have to equal the imaginary part on the right. So minus 3y has to make 12. So y is minus 4. Now put the x and the y back together to make um, z in the form x plus i y, and we have z is 3 minus 4 i. Okay, for part c, we have um, a cubic equation, and we're given one of the roots that z is minus 4. We need to find the other solutions and the value of h. Okay, so first of all, we're going to sub in minus 4 into this equation and that will help us to work out what h needs to be so working that through we know that h must be 21. now i'm going to show you two ways to to go through this i'm going to show you the longhand algebra and then how to do it faster on your calculator so if we set up this um algebraically it's going to look like this that the the cubic we started with has a factor of z plus 4 because minus 4 is a root, so it's got a factor here. Then the other factor must be a um, quadratic that looks like this, and I'm doing this by inspection. So I'm checking this 4 has to times by something to make 180, so that something has to be 45 at the end there. Uh, the z terms all multiply to make z cubed, so this one must be z squared. And the only thing I'm not sure about is the a that's in the middle. So then we can compare some terms on both sides. So I'm going to do that by looking at the z's. So on the z's, we have 21z on the left-hand side. 
and on the right, we will get it from doing 4 times az, and we also get it from doing 45 times z. So 4a plus 45 must make 21, so a is minus 6. Now what that tells us is that we then have this quadratic um, where the, the a that was there, uh, we're putting in the minus 6 now. So that's that quadratic just brought down here. And we can get the other two roots by setting that equal to 0. So now I, pref I prefer to do completing the square. That's what this line is here. You can do it by quadratic formula too if you want. Um, so working that through, we end up with z is equal to 3 plus or minus 6i. Now, as promised, when you get, get down to this point just here, you can actually switch entirely into your calculator and do equation solver because we now have the full equation. So, um, oh, sorry, I'm not doing solver. I'm doing the polynomial type of solver. So this is F2 here. We've got a degree of three and I'm putting in the values of the equation up here. So Z cubed is one. We have a negative two Z squared. H was 21. The constant is 180. Now, before I hit solve, I'm going to go to my setup and change the complex mode to be into complex instead of real. OK, and now we can do solve. We get all of the solutions right there. So there's the minus four we were given in the question. And there's the three plus six I and the three minus six I. OK, for part D, we're going to find the argument, which is pretty straightforward. Once we have um, W into a form that we can work with, um, we need to sort out what's happening here. So this will be um, doing, sorry, just trying to write and speak at the same time. Um, we need to put this into a common denominator. So it'll be 2, 1 minus root 3i over 1 minus root 3i. Um, and working that through looks like this. So then 4 minus 2 becomes a 2. Oh, I missed a... That should have been a 2 just there. And then we'll rationalize the denominator. And I've just skipped ahead to save us a bit of time. This comes to minus 1 plus root 3i. Um, now, for me personally, I would not write this all out by hand. I have my calculator um, updated to be able to show SIRDs, or if you have one of the newer models, it'll just do it naturally. It's worth investigating how to update your calculator if you do have a slightly older model. All right, anyway, back to what we were doing. Now, um, finding the argument of this, we first need to plot it onto an argand diagram. And that looks like this, because uh, we've got the negative one in the x direction and then a plus root three. Now that's one of your special triangles. Um, so we can find the angle here by looking on your formula sheet or by just using some standard trig. So theta there will be the inverse tan of root three over one, and that is pi by three. Now if this bit here is pi by three, the argument is the uh, the rest of it from the positive x axis here. So therefore the argument of um, w must be 2 pi by 3 because it's it's this bit here. So we've done um, pi minus pi by 3 to get the argument that's left 2 pi by 3. Okay, this excellence question's not so bad. It's just um, got quite a few algebra steps in it. So start by writing that z is x plus i y. Then um, if we pop that into the equation that we've been given, it becomes this. So the modulus of z plus i means that we're going to take z and add on i. So it'll be x plus i, y plus i. And modulus means that we take the real part and square it, the imaginary part and square it, um, and then do the square root of the sum of those two things. Um, so if we take z, which was the i, y, and we added on i, we've got y plus 1 for the imaginary part. That's where that comes from. We're doing a similar thing here on the right hand side. So we've got um, the modulus of z minus 5i. If we've taken off a minus 5i from the z, then our imaginary part is y minus 5. So real part squared, imaginary part squared, add it together, find the square root. Now we're going to square both sides. So for the square root part, it just means take away the square root, but don't forget this 2 also needs to be squared. 
Now, if we expand that out, we're looking like this. And then we're going to start um, moving things around, collecting like terms, cancelling things out. So we end up with this, moving everything over to the left hand side and simplifying. We've got this one. Now, all of that can be divided by three. That's this next line here. Now, we're almost there, but we want to put it in this form here. And to do that, we have to do completing the square. So the x part doesn't have any any singular x with it, so that can stay as x squared, but the y part does. We need to do y minus half of the coefficient of y, and then we take away the square of that. This is just completing the square on the y terms, just the y terms themselves. So y minus 7 for half of the 14, and then take away the 7 squared, because that gave us a bit too much. Um, and then add the 33 back on. Now tidy this up, and you've got an equation in the form that we had just here. So in this case, k would have been 4. Okay, question 3a. I've got another little weird thing happened on the printout here. That's an s, but um, the question is asking us to find v, um, which is equal to 2r minus s. So first of all, uh, write down what r and s are. So for r, it's 3 plus 2i. For s, it's 2 minus 5i. And we're going to pop that into the equation for v. Uh, you can also do this part on your calculator fairly quickly, but it didn't take much to do it by hand either. So that's 4 plus 9i. Now, the key bit to make sure you do not miss on these ones is this bit here. Mark it on the diagram. So if you don't finish, you're not going to get this achieved point. So... Um, here we've now got the 4 plus 9 goes on here on the positive quadrant, just like so. Okay, part D, we have a quadratic to solve. My preferred method on this paper is always completing the square. That's what I'm doing here. So um, z squared um, into completed square form. We got take the z, we take half of the coefficient of z here, square that take off that term squared, so that's 9k squared, and then stick the rest of the equation back in there. Now we're going to simplify that, um, take the k's over to the other side. Now we can square root, so this will be plus or minus the square root of this piece here. Now um, the negative gets square rooted into a minus into an i, and the k squared is square rooted into k. Um, and then move the 3 over, the 3k. So that becomes a minus 3k on the right-hand side. And now we have that in the form that was asked for in the question. Okay, so part C, we are finding roots solutions to this. And you're given a clue a little bit here where it says to do it in polar form. Um, the way we're going to solve this is using de Marwitz theorem. So first of all, I need to change this into z cubed equals, and then we have this term here. Um, that um, in itself in polar form, we can rewrite as this because it's it's this picture here. So minus k to the 6 on the imaginary axis like this means we're going to have an argument coming down here of minus pi by 2 coming below that x line and um, a length of k to the 6. Now we can solve that finding the cubed root of these using de Marwitz theorem. So the modulus we find the cubed root of. So k to the 6, if we cube root, it will be k squared. And the argument gets divided by 3. Um, so we've done the third root and we've divided by 3 on the argument. Now the second solution here is to take that first solution here from the, the pi by 2 add on a full circle and then divide it by the 3 because this one here we could have got to it by doing minus pi by 2 but we also could have done a full circle of 2 pi and then another pi by 2 to get down there okay so um, then simplifying this bit becomes uh, k squared cis pi over 6 and if you're not confident with your fractions just type them into the calculator without the pi's and then pop a pi back in at the end and the third solution is we add yet another circle to our original amount. So the original argument um, got added one circle of 2 pi, now two circles of 2 pi, and then divide it by 3. And that simplifies to this one. 
there is an alternative way to work out these second solutions here and it's by knowing that these three solutions will be spaced um, evenly around the circle so once you've got the first solution you can do um, 2 pi divided by 3 because there are three solutions and a full circle is 2 pi and then add that on to your solution each time so we can take minus pi by 6 and add on 2 pi by 3 to get pi by 6 add another 2 pi by 3 and you'll get 7 pi by 6. There's your other way that you can do it as well. Now, um, strictly speaking, because this bit has gone over pi, you would probably, you should turn it into a, a negative 5 pi by 6, but it, in the mark schemes for these ones, they don't specify that you have to simplify that bit, so don't worry about it too much. Okay, for part D, we want to prove that something can't happen. Um, now to do that we go through as if it could and then show that we get to things that don't make sense. So with this one start with z equals x plus i y um, and then if the modulus of z and sorry this is just a bad printout I don't know what happened with this one but that just says modulus of z it's not conjugate. So the modulus of z minus z is i then we would have this thing be if if that were true then this would be true as well. So we'd have the modulus of z is x squared plus y squared um, square rooted. We'd take away z and it would be equal to i. So carrying that logic through, trying to solve it looks like this. So squaring both sides at this point um, gives us this next line here, remembering not to miss out the middle term here. And tidying that up, and expanding out that bracket and then bringing everything over to the left hand side and setting it equal to zero as if we were trying to solve this. Now if this is true we've got a real part here that we have to make equal to zero and an imaginary part that also has to be equal to zero. So if I start off with um, the imaginary part equal to zero then we can work that through, rearrange it, and we get that y equals minus 2x over 2x, which is minus 1. Okay, no real issue just yet. Now, the real part must also be equal to 0. So this bit here, equal to 0, let's carry on with y being minus 1. So if we pop that into this equation here, because, I mean, we've, we've got a y part that could go into this but we haven't got the x yet so I'm going to use the other equation to try and find it but it's it's going to be, become a bit tricky um, so when we put the minus 1 in what happens is instead of helping us to solve what x is it brings us up with something completely contradictory now that cannot be possible so therefore there is no solution to this because we were working on the premise of if this was true what's the solution well if we get to there being no solution then it can't have been true to begin with. So there's no complex number z that will make this true. Okay, and finally, the last excellence question of the paper. We've got that z is a plus b i. We're going to substitute it into this to work out what z has to be. Okay, so um, popping it into here, we've got z just here and its conjugate here. Now we need to put that over a common denominator. Um, so we have the i gets multiplied by the a minus bi, the 3 gets multiplied by the a plus bi to put it over that common denominator. Um, multiplying those through, this is what we end up getting, it's still equal to 1. Okay, so the real part of this on the left hand side, picking out just the real pieces is 3a and b here over a squared plus b squared. And the imaginary part we have an a with the i here, and we've got the 3b with the i there, so we have a plus 3b also over a squared plus b squared, and that equals to 0. Now this um, if this one here is like the most straightforward one to, to go with, I guess. So um, if we bring the a squared plus b squared up here and times it by 0, then we end up with a plus 3b equals 0, so therefore a is equal to 3b. Now take that and substitute it into this one because this one got times by one. So when we bring the a squared plus b squared up, um, it's left there. It didn't multiply out by zero like this one did. Um, and so then substituting in the a is equal to minus 3b, 
uh, we're doing a bit of simultaneous equations here. So we can pop in uh, the value of minus 3b for a, carry on working that through, and we end up with b is minus 4 fifths and a is 12 over 5. With this one, if you wanted to check whilst you're in the exam and you've got the time, you could put that value of z um, being 12 over 5 minus 4 over 5i into this equation and check that it comes out to be 1. Okay, that's it.